Here is a Kenwood model KX54 cassette deck from 1985. This is a recent dump find and it already gives us a clue to what is wrong with it. If I press stop eject, it doesn't eject. This is a soft touch mechanism, which means you still get the traditional mechanical buttons under the cassette compartment. But these buttons are very, very easy to push in. They require no force. And that is because they only select the function. The function is then activated, mechanically engaged, by the cassette deck motor via a very clever mechanism. Now, what happens, it's a common fault with these soft touch mechanisms, when the belt goes bad and somebody presses play, the cassette deck manages to partially engage the playback mode, but then the belt either starts slipping or it breaks, something goes wrong, and the cassette deck is then stuck in the playback mode, which means this stop eject button will act as a stop button. Here is a look inside. This is the typical mid-1980s entry-level simple cassette deck, but I like it. We have a decent little transformer. We have sort of a modular design on the main board. The voltage regulator of the power supply has a proper heatsink. Here is the mechanism. You can tell this is a mid-1980s entry-level cassette deck. We do have quite a bit of plastic, and the flywheel is more of a fly disc. And here is the problem. You've probably all already seen it. This belt, as well as the other hidden belt that connects the motor to the flywheel, are about as loose as they get. These are well on their way to melt and turn into a sticky goo. And that is the reason why I did not turn the cassette deck on in the beginning. Because the risk is, if these belts are almost molten, and you turn on the cassette deck, the motor starts running, it violently rips apart the half-molten belt, and then you end up with bits of half-molten rubber all over your mechanism. I have had that before, and I don't need a repeat of that. So now I can carefully extract these belts while they are still intact. Now, to do that, you can uh, disconnect this spring right here. This is the linkage that connects this mechanism to the record play switch on the main board. All these cables right here, thankfully, are socketed on the main board, so that's not a problem. Uh, this bracket holding the motor in place has to come off, but the screws holding this in place are on the sides, so you can't get to them. So this whole entire deck, this whole entire mechanism, needs to come out. There is four screws in uh, either corner of the mechanism, and to more easily get to the screws down here, I think I'm going to take off the back panel. And here is the mechanism taken out. I cut the cable tie right here. So now I can take off this bracket. There is actually a third screw down there. But we'll start over here with what I think is probably the most difficult screw. This one right here, it holds a bracket in place, but it also holds the entire eject mechanism on, as you can see. So I've already taken a good look at that, so hopefully if something unexpected happens, I can uh, put it back together. All right, screw is out. Uh, okay, see this? Yeah, I was expecting that. So this damper is going to come off along with it. That's how it goes in. Okay, put that to the side. We have to release the spring right here. 
this is gonna want to fall apart if I release the... Uh, uh, okay, well, I guess we're we're safe. Spring is off, so that should... Yes, even now the whole thing's gonna want to come apart. But we might be able to do something about that. Sticky tape to the rescue. It's probably not going to stick very well, but uh, if I put that over here, this, uh, this plastic shouldn't fall out. Okay, so that's the first screw out. And yeah, bracket appears to be loose. So now the second problematic screw right here. Now this uh, this mechanism seems to be sitting on an axle right there, so taking the screw out should not cause it to fall apart completely. And I gotta unhook this spring right here. And then finally this screw. which is a fine thread screw. And now... Ah. Oh, there we go. It, uh, it's off. Okay, this... Ah, see, this belt... As, I, as I'm taking this apart, the main belt is, has ripped. I can pull this off the flywheel carefully, but yeah, look at that. This this is this is just melting. Look at that. That was a mess waiting to happen. Right, let me let me try this belt here. Oh dear. Oh yeah, that's 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 okay. Okay, well, we're too late for this one. The uh, rubber right here seems to be stuck to the pulley already. And this is, uh, yeah, I'm going to need to wash my hands now. All the pulleys and all other surfaces that had rubber deposits on them have been cleaned thoroughly. Isopropyl alcohol does a really good job for that, and this is kind of a new idea. I don't know why I haven't had that idea earlier. Rubber gloves do a really good job of protecting your hands against the isopropyl alcohol. So all the cleaning I have done without completely destroying the skin on my hands. Now, as you can see, I've taken out the flywheel. And see, this does not only have those two pulleys there and then this pulley down here. There is also the gear right there. And this is important. See, this gear engages with this special gear right there. And that is part of the soft touch mechanism. In fact, this follower and then this arm is what moves the head bridge up and down. Now, as I said in the beginning, this deck was stuck in, uh, you know, somewhere along the way of going into playback mode. Now, you can't take it apart in that state, because it's kind of unpredictable what might happen. Something might be under tension, and then things can go flying. So you have to bring it back into the home position before taking out the flywheel. Now, that is easy to do. You just turn the flywheel manually, and you don't even necessarily have to work out, you know, which direction does the motor turn in, which direction does the flywheel turn in. In my experience, if you're turning the flywheel into the wrong direction, either there is going to be resistance or a funny noise, or in case of this cassette deck, nothing happened. So turn it into the right direction, and this gear is going to make a full turn, the head bridge is going to drive up, and then you turn it a bit further and it's going to pop back down. And that is when the mechanism is back in the home position. You can see on this gear there is two alignment marks, and it looks like 
if you imagine a connecting line between those dots, this line should be vertical. Uh, I can't see any timing marks, alignment marks corresponding with this gear anywhere else. So I think that's what it is. Certainly, the gear, the geared section around this has reached the end. And, you know, if the mechanism is back in the home position, you can keep turning the flywheel into the right direction that you've worked out by then, and nothing is going to happen. So that's how you know everything's back in the home position. And then it is safe to take out the flywheel, which I have done for more effective cleaning. So, already it's time to bring in the first new belt. The first new old belt, I should say. Once again, for this project, no overpriced belt kits. I'm just using belts out of my inventory. Uh, now, this is also a good opportunity to apply a, a drop or two of oil to the capstan bearing right there. So, here are some general purpose household oil, fine oil, no silicon oil, that's too runny. That's just going to cause a mess. And as usual, I'm using a syringe to very carefully apply this oil. I guess it should be clear that uh, spray cans are a big no-no for this sort of thing. Okay, I'm holding the belt in place so that I don't lose it. Reinsert the capstan into the bearing and hook the belt. Uh, that, that was not supposed to happen. Hook the belt over here. And that should be it. And, yep, that's it. That is the proper size. Okay, and yeah, as you can see, I'm quite happily turning the flywheel and the soft touch mechanism is in the home position, so it, it doesn't keep doing weird things. Now, uh, the thing that you should not forget is on the other side, let me carefully release the door. On the other side, on top of the capstan goes a clear transparent washer and that is what uh, keeps oil from coming out of the capstan bearing and getting all over the tape and pinch roller. Obviously you can't lose this washer and when you're done fixing the capstan, you've got to put it back like so. There we go. Of course, the capstan, since I did stick it through the newly oiled bearing, is now going to be oily as well. So I have to clean that before using the cassette deck for the first time. There will be another video covering the total disaster that I've just had that necessitated a complete replacement of the motor. So that's why that is now looking different and is mounted with some rubber standoffs. Anyway, now it's finally time to make some progress again. I have found two replacement belts just by trial and error. Of course, the old molten belts are no good as size reference. In fact, they're no good for anything at all. So here is the first one. That goes on like so, and then around here, and there it is. It's not even twisted. Okay, and the next one I'm going to put on with the uh, back plate with the motor halfway in place. I think that should be the easiest way to do it. First, it's now a good opportunity to apply some white lithium grease to the back of the capstan. Now, I should mention with this, uh, see, this is what they call a back bearing. It's just a flat piece of plastic. 
So you have to use grease for that. Oil is not going to stay in place. Now I can go ahead and fit the belt around the motor pulley and up, up on here. Okay. And then one of my helpful tools is going to assist me in putting the belt around. And there it is, it's on. Okay, now let's not forget to put this spring back in. I just, uh, I took it out because I didn't want this to get into the way of things or get into the way of the belts much rather. So that, okay, hooks over there like so. We can. Yep, there we go. That now goes over there, like so. And now I can push the bracket on all the way. I think that was it. Yep, screw hole is aligned, spring is in place, and let's uh, see. Yes, the belts are working. So from this point onwards, reassembly is the reverse of disassembly. Okay, let me try to salvage this video. Things got really out of hand. I spent over three hours messing around with this mechanism, trying to get it to work. Four main items. The first one, after replacing the belts, I plugged the mechanism into the deck to see if it worked, and it didn't. The play mode worked, but the stop eject button, after you'd pressed stop, it was still stuck being a stop button. It wouldn't eject. And the buttons for fast forward and rewind were stuck. You couldn't press them. That took a long time to finally figure out what the problem was. Now, you can see down in the mechanism right here in this section it actually stretches all across the mechanism this is the part of the mechanism that latches the functions that latches the function buttons this mechanism consists of three pieces of stamped metal sandwiched on top of each other they have grease in between so that they can more easily slide on top of each other. And the grease seemed to be okay, but it has changed its consistency somehow, causing these three metal pieces to stick together and to not slide anymore. Now, you can see how deep down in the mechanism this is. To get to those pieces and to take them apart and clean them properly, you'd have to disassemble everything, including the uh, soft touch mechanism, so that's not going to happen. So I use the syringe, good old fine oil syringe, to force some oil in between the three layers of metal, and that seems to work. It has freed them up. This, this is now working. The second thing, after some more testing, it turned out that uh, the main belt going from the motor to the flywheel was too weak. It would not transfer enough torque, so sometimes when pressing play, 
the belt would start slipping on the motor pulley and the mechanism was stuck. Now, the solution was not a tighter belt, but a thicker belt. So there is more contact area between the rubber belt and the pulley. And I have also turned the pulley around. I turned the pulley upside down to be able to move it closer to the new motor to get it better aligned with the flywheel. The third thing that needed to be done, with all this messing around of the mechanism, one of the wires ripped off the record playback head, so one channel remained silent. Now, access to the heads, as you can see, is difficult, but thankfully, you take out two screws, one here, and one there, and then this whole entire part of the mechanism with the uh, control buttons and the cassette door, it all comes off. And then you have the access that you need. And then the fourth thing that needed to be done, more testing revealed there was a rather loud noise during playback, and that turned out to be something wrong with this, the take-up reel assembly. There is the reel itself, and then this white section in the back is a clutch. And there is a little ring that holds everything in place right there. So you can pull this whole entire assembly off. That's what I did. I took the assembly apart. I found some really bad grease in there. It was more like wax. So I cleaned that out, I replaced it, however, I don't know how that grease could have contributed to that noise occurring. But anyway, I put the assembly back together, I tried it out, I just ran a cassette for about half an hour, and the noise was gone. So now I can finally continue where I originally wanted to continue the video. I have a new counter belt. This is an actual new belt. This was part of a belt kit for another deck and I never used that belt, so I'm just gonna store that over there temporarily. Then I can put the back plate back in, like so. That holds in place using two screws. Yeah, it's quite amazing how much patience I have today, but I can tell you, you can be glad that I stopped filming when things started going completely off the rails, because there was a lot of swearing. Let's put the mechanism back in place. This is a little bit fiddly, but it can be done. What you do is you look at it from up above and you can slide the mechanism in diagonally. You've got to force that button a little bit to the side. And then same thing up here. You lift it a little bit to get the door to clear and make sure we don't pinch any wires. Okay, like so. That's the mechanism in place. And you can see up here, I'm gonna take the counter belt and put that in place before we lose it somewhere. And now I can already get the first screw to hold the mechanism onto the chassis and I really hope that this won't have to come back out anytime soon. Unfortunately the weird noise in the take-up reel assembly is still there. I took the whole thing apart again to apply some oil 
along the axle, not into the clutch itself, that wouldn't be good. In doing so, I broke the little clip that holds the take-up reel in place. Thankfully, I was able to find a somewhat suitable replacement in this computer fan. I can demonstrate the noise. You should be able to hear it quite clearly. And this is some sort of a resonance, because the slightest touch just to change the resonant frequency and the thing is silent. And I'm applying no force at all. Now, if I was now going to let this play for about three or four minutes, eventually the noise will disappear. Likewise, if I put the cassette deck into fast forward, if I fast forward far enough, the noise will be gone. Of course, as the tape progresses, the speed of the take-up reel will change, which again changes the resonant frequency of the system, so eventually it won't resonate anymore. I don't really know what else I could do, and at this point I actually don't want to do any more to this, because, well, this little clip has been a bit of a warning. If I keep messing around with this, eventually something will break, which won't be repairable anymore. So I'm going to leave this as it is. And here it is, the Kenwood model KX54, nicely cleaned up, including the heads. Apparently some people think I haven't done that if I don't explicitly mention it. Unfortunately, not working as well as it should. There is not only the noise issue in the take-up reel. Also, after I put this all back together, I made another test recording, which I will play to you. And it does sound good, but unfortunately... For some reason, the speed has gone a bit wonky, and I don't need a computer program to determine that. Thank you very much. But I've now put about half a week of work into this thing, which is already way more than it's probably worth. So don't worry, I'm not going to throw this away. I will put it into storage and maybe one day I'll manage to get it working properly. But until then, that's it. Well, maybe there is one feature that remains to be demonstrated, and that is the Direct Program Search System, which they are advertising right there on the front. You push, in addition to playback, either fast forward or rewind. And it releases fast forward or rewind when it detects a pause between songs. Kind of a nice feature to have, I guess. Well, that's it. Thank you for watching.